As anyone who's ever worked on call will probably tell you, diagnosing network issues in Kubernetes can be a real nightmare. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a tool that I use all the time to look at traffic analysis and to figure out where the breaks are between services. Join me as we walk through the history of Wireshark and now looking at CubeShark to make your life easier when you're on the hot seat. Before we dive right in, I just wanted to illustrate why this is an important topic to talk about, especially in the Kubernetes world. Because people might think packet analysis and looking at traffic is something that is kind of Linuxy and old fashioned and it's not something I need. Well, it couldn't be further from the truth. Take something like two nodes, two worker nodes, and then a cluster with a couple of services that talk to each other. I'm not going to go into how services, endpoints, and queue proxy and all that work. But what I want to show is how there is interdependency that can be tricky to analyze if you don't have the tooling to do so. For example, service A might be making HTTPS requests to service B to figure out a status of something in service C. If there is a failure or a break, aside from looking at the logs, there aren't really any inbuilt ways to deal with this, right? You couldn't really figure out what's going on at all. That's where you have to install additional tooling. Some people might say you want to put an ambient service mesh on your cluster, right? And that service mesh would be under the pods, under the service, and it would go down into the kernel using eBPF or something like that and come back up and tell you what's going on. But the thing about that is you've got to install the service mesh, and then you've got to install the service mesh's observability systems, which will sit over here. So there's a couple of steps that don't make it super intuitive. And then the final thing about this is that these service meshes don't typically have PCAP the ability to capture and analyze packets in a standardized format. So whether I'm using service mesh A or B or CNI, A or B, they might sure give me some visual data, but then how do I show this to my, my CISO? How do I show it to my team? How do I then look at it in a common way? And also how do I filter? A lot of the filters are very, very basic. I can't look at like port number in the analysis mode. So there is really a gap in Kubernetes for a good tool that can do this. So today, what I want to do is to show you what I use to get there. But let's start with the historical side of things. Wireshark, which was known as Ethereal in 1998, was effectively one of the first and best ways to look at traffic between L4 and L7 using a set of technologies which today have become standardized. It also has a standardized way of writing out its PCAP file that have been adopted across the industry and a language for its display filters. I'm not gonna to talk to you today about Wireshark because that's a well-trodden path. There are tons of tutorials. It has its own foundation and it's a very, very rich and vibrant community. So rich in fact that it has influenced a new tool called CubeShark. CubeShark is cut from the same cloth. It has a wonderful UI. It has a really powerful filter language, has the ability to do analysis and write out files and it's super easy to use. It doesn't have any overhead of installing a CNI. It doesn't have any overhead of managing an ambient service mesh. It lets you do all of the traffic forensics and it lets you then write those files and use them with Wireshark. And if that wasn't enough, what's even better is that it supports additional L7, uh, L7 Plus protocols such as gRPC that show up in a really rich and clear way so we can diagnose my services A, B, and C. And so I'm going to take you through that today in a few easy steps. Now, assuming that you've used the installers such as Brew from the website, you should have KubeShark locally enabled here. We also need to make sure we've got a live cluster. So I'm using my set of M93s and then also my Raspberry Pi cluster behind me. I've got a Kube config which I can connect to and check that I've got everything up and running. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and go KubeShark tap because tap is the command that will inject daemon set into your cluster to monitor network traffic. I'm also going to say A for all. You can do this by namespace, and I think that's a nice security feature to have, as well as TLS, which allows us to decapsulate TLS-based traffic. We're going to set that up as a daemon process in the background, and what it's doing here is it's just checking out the pods I've currently got in my cluster, targeting those, and setting up the front end for KubeShark. You'll also see that down here, I've got the command that says localhost. That's effectively because it automatically serves you a front end called the hub, and that's what we're going to check out next. So once we've got that, what we're going to do is we're going to jump on into it. So let me just change over here, and we can see now we've got this beautiful UX that's being served out from the front end. 
let's have a quick walk through this. The first thing to note is that you can pause this at any point. If this is overwhelming you and you want to analyze something, you just pause it. Otherwise, you can start streaming again. The next thing is that you've got the event feed on the left here showing the items from TCP and UDP streams. And you can click on any one of these and get data on the details screen on the right. You've also got the filter syntax. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment and a few other commands. But probably most notably and the most fun to look at is the service map. The service map is a really, really good visual representation of what's going on in your cluster. The bigger and thicker the arrow, the more packets that are going back and forth. So you can see that metrics Argo, uh, Argo CD is hitting cube DNS multiple times a second as to be expected. I also can see that my Nginx ingress has some traffic as well. You can drag this stuff around uh, and it's really fun to play with just to you know, entertain yourself even if you're not looking for something in particular. Going back to this on the left, what makes this stream manageable is the same thing that you use in Wireshark, which is the filter syntax. They're slightly different, but at the same time, it's familiar enough and there's a guide so you can pick it up pretty quickly. You can see here, for example, that there is an example showing how to look at certain types of response status. So let's go ahead and try this command. This should pick up anything that is HTTP and over a 400. And what we can see is that we picked up something straight away. I can see there's an issue with Loki. What's the issue with Loki? Well, on the details screen, we see that we have a request. The request looks like it's coming from the Grafana agent that I'm running in my cluster. And we can see that we can look at the response, that there is no org ID set. So it is returning an unauthorized 401. So I can adjust that and we can carry on. So right there, you've got immense value in a very easy uh, to consume way. Doing that through the cluster would typically be done with logs and you'd be lucky to be able to spot that log message um, if it comes out at all. Another thing to notice is that we have the ability to add these little pluses because that lets us set an additional filter on our query. What I might want to do is to just say, well, what's going to Loki full stop, right? I just want to see everything. So now what we can do is we can set anything with a destination name of Loki. So in this particular occurrence, it's just this one thing. I might also want to say, well, what's going to node one and just set that up as my, as my thing to look at. So this is all the traffic going to a particular node, which is really, really cool. Because if you're trying to look at things like an issue with soft IRQ um, or, or something that's faltering on the node, this can be a really helpful companion for you to see what's going on there. And again, this service map will update to show you uh, just what's on that particular node with a particular set of filters um, in time. You can see also at the top here, there's a drop down which shows me all the pods on my system in general, which is kind of a nice reminder of what it's actually looking like. Uh, again, see there's that 401, which is really useful to see. However, this isn't where it ends because seeing this traffic and playing with it is one thing. What about actually sending these results to a colleague? Well, this is where the PCAP format comes in. You can see that I can save and download a snapshot of my PCAP. Why is that useful? Well, because if somebody's using WireGuard or somebody's using another analysis tool, it's a common enough format that they can import it and use it. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that would actually look like in something like Wireshark. So what I'll do is I'll just switch over to Wireshark. I'll import my PCAP and then we can take a look at it. So here I've got my PCAP file for the past couple of minutes. And you can see that this is all the traffic coming out of my Kubernetes cluster for that period in time. And what I can do is I can use the Wireshark display filter commands to say something like uh, TCP port is equal to port 80, right? And pick up all the traffic, which is on my HTTP port. And then I can look down and see if I have any issues, if there, if there are problems with the frames, if we've got bad data at any point. And we can also track things such as port connections. So we're really getting into the nuts and bolts of, of network analysis, which is tremendous. This isn't a video again on Wireshark, but I just want to illustrate just how powerful KubeShark is in that it places the ability to have interoperability with other tools at the forefront. And it's just so damn easy to get going. So as you can see, this took me what, like a minute to get up and running and I'm already getting value out of it. Just one last thing around the issue uh, that we saw a moment with, with the HTTP um, request being a 400, sorry, the response being a 400. What we can also do is to check and see things like, well, is the entire pod dead or is it something else? So what you can do 
is you can actually say, well, are all the requests, right? Is it, uh, is it all the requests going to, Loki, uh, going to Loki that aren't working or is it just on this particular path? So the last thing I wanted to show just quickly was that you've got this idea of request path. So what I can do is I can change the request path to say, is the ready path not working? Is it another path on the service that isn't working as well? So you can play around with these things, but I just wanted to illustrate that that's a really powerful capability. I want to keep this quite short and sweet as the tool speaks for itself. And I think people who are familiar with Wireshark understand the value of traffic analysis. I do hope that anybody who's new to this space in observability in particular and interested will go check out CubeShark because it's super easy to use and provides a lot of value. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please do comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.